This lesson is on special cases of permutations. So we've covered a variety of questions with restrictions and um, identical objects, another sort of um, method that you can use to solve specific types of questions. And these special cases are going to close it off. And the first one, and probably the most important, is objects that must stay together. So somewhere in the question, it will either state explicitly or else it will suggest that objects have to stay together. And um, here, if you have Clem has four different physics textbooks and three different math books on his shelf, how many arrangements of these books can be made if the math books must be kept together? Now, without um, this restriction on it, it'd be a fairly routine seven, six, five, four, three, two, one question or seven factorial. But it's not, because for whatever reasons, Clem wants these math books to be kept together. Now, to Armstrong your way through this, it would be a very difficult task. So we develop a method for it. And if these are the math books, and they don't have to be located exactly there, they can in fact be going anywhere, to the left or to the right. But they must stay together. And the method that we always use for objects that stay together is we treat them as a single object. So from here on in, there's only one math book, one math object. Now that changes things a bit, because even though they can move all over the place, instead of having one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven objects, if you count them up now, we've only got five objects. One, two, three, four, five objects. The four physics books, and then the one math object. And five objects can be arranged five factorial ways, or five pick five if you preferred. And then the math books amongst themselves, so don't forget that they can be shuffled amongst themselves, um, you know, where, to whichever position. They are three different math books, so they're not like identical objects. And then finally, to finish that off, five factorial times three factorial which will give you 720 ways to arrange these. So that is always the method. You treat the objects that are to stay together as a single object. Let's try another one. How many ways can seven people be arranged in a line if Tim B and Tim R must stand side by side? That's question number one. Question number two is the Tims must not stand together. So for the first one, where Tim B and Tim R must stand together, I've got the diagram up already, the Tims are going to be together, and as before, they can be anywhere to the, you know, slide them all over, but they have to stay together. Now that changes things because if you count up the number of objects now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six objects, which can be arranged six factorial ways. But don't forget, the Tims can be arranged, because this is Tim B, and this is Tim R, and they can be, sw they can switch positions. So the way we do that is we just, two objects can be arranged two factorial ways and then we multiply again. So it's 6 factorial times 2 factorial. So very much like the previous question. They must stay together, so we treat them as one object, and then we arrange them amongst themselves. Now the next bullet inverses all this because it's where the Tims must not stand together. Now most people approach these questions quite innocently, and they think, well, that's easy. They just work out all the ways they can not be together. But it actually is quite challenging, because if you consider it, I'll just write this up to the side. If you took seven objects, the seven people, and you know you put Tim B there, and you put Tim R there, well, think of all the different ways you could set them up where they're not together. So it isn't practical to solve it directly. We solve it indirectly instead. And the thinking goes like this. If you were to take a look at all the possible comp arrangements of seven objects, that's the total number of ways to arrange these seven people in a line. And we subtract away the 
the arrangements we do not want. And in other words, where the TIMS, i.e., the TIMS are together. So instead of adding up all the different possibilities where they are apart, we simply go after the ones where they are together, which, by the way, we have on the previous bullet. And then we subtract them away from the total number of ways to arrange these seven objects. So I'll get rid of that writing and bring up a new cleaner screen. So we would take the total number of ways to arrange seven objects, no restrictions, just the total number of seven, and then we would subtract the number of ways to arrange seven people with the TIMS together. So that would give us seven factorial for this, and then we would subtract away six factorial, two factorial. Now this is from the previous question. So we already know that that's 1440 or something like that. So that gives us 3,600 ways to do this. So that's the way you have to tackle those problems. Too much work otherwise. Now this method works well in general. So there'll be a few questions down down the road in this unit where we'll approach that indirectly. If it ever looks like there's too many ways to solve the question, consider doing an indirect one. See if it's easier to get rid of the ones that you don't want. Now the next question is a fairly simple one. Um, how many ways can the letters of the word no jack be arranged if the letters ACK must be kept together in that order? So this one's different than the previous question because here we're insisting that we keep those three objects together, but they've got to stay in that order, so there's no need to arrange them amongst themselves. So our diagram would look kind of like this. We'd have the ACK there, and of course the ACK could go anywhere, but all you need to do is count up the number of objects. One, two, three, four, and that's it. Four objects can be arranged four factorial ways and four factorial is 24 so there's 24 arrangements so you must read carefully to make sure that you're um, you're picking up on whether they stay together in that order or not now the next question does, is not an object stick together question the next question is a new concept although I have um, refer to it already. These are OR questions, or you often thought as mutually exclusive. Situations. Now the word OR has implications. And here's a question, an old style question. A lookout station has four signal flags of different color. How many different signals can be sent if no more than two flags can be flown at any one time? Now this phrase, no more, is important because that, that's a directing word or directing words. Now the thing of it is, this maybe doesn't make much sense to people anymore. But if you've got these four signal flags and you've got no other technology to get your, you know, to talk to other people, the way they used to do it was to fly flags. And for example, they would fly a red flag over a blue flag, assuming that those are the two of the two of the colors they have. Now that means something. So who's ever on the receiving end will look and see that and they go, "Okay, that means like uh, you know, whatever. Send more blankets." If this was reversed, like if it was the blue over the red, they'd know that that meant something different yet again. Now that's two flags. And the restriction on this question is that it could be two flags um, or fewer. Now you've got to make sense of that because if no more than two flags 
are, are the restrictions. It could be two flags or it could be one flag. And this word or is being used. I like to write it in there because it means that these are mutually exclusive events. You cannot have two flags and one flag at the same time. It either is two flags or it is one flag. It cannot be both. And that word or has huge implications. Because the, to work out the two flags, well, the old way of doing it, it would be to draw slots, that is, use the fundamental counting principle, and I'm still going to do that. And we'd have two of them. And then we'd have one flag, like that. And the word or implies addition. That's what you want to be clear on. When you see a question saying or, it means you add. Now the question may not say or, but it will suggest it in the question by saying no more, at least, or something like that. Those are probably the most common ones. So you read carefully. To solve this, to actually work it out, to take those four flags and select two of them, it would mean we have four choices for the first position, three for the second, and then one flag would be simply four. So this would be 12 plus 4, which is equal to 16 signals. And if it made you happy, you could also go 4 pick 2 plus 4 pick 1. And that means the same thing. It's just it's not as, not as easy to do. It takes a few more keystrokes. So that's how we tackle these ones. So that's going to take care of the permutations. The next lesson will introduce combinations, which are you'll see have a relationship to permutations, but you've got to really be on top of it. And then that will bring, following a few days of that, will bring a close to the unit. So that's it for this unit. Um, thank you for your time.